I'm Denise. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the learning modules from September week three, lesson three, from pre-K up to middle school. Starting with pre-K, lesson three, we always have an introduction and some review. We have any printables that you might need in this overview. We always start our pre-K lessons with time for music, clap your hands, and you can do that now asking the children to give you different ways of keeping a beat. Time for music, tap your shoulders. We go on to a warm up with Bobo. Bobo is my friend, Bobo, and the kids will echo. So you can use it to teach simple songs. You can use it to have the kids sing back patterns. And sometimes Bobo will say something to me like, oh, the pre-Ks are singing so well today. This is a tennis ball and the mouth is cut out and then he is decorated or she is decorated. So it's a very cute little manipulative and fun for the Ks, ones, twos, even the threes like Bobo. Here I do a keep the beat video and you can just copy what I do or choose a piece of your own music and find different ways to keep the beat for the kids. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Even though we don't have COVID restrictions now in most schools, it's still a good practice to wash hands. One potato is a cute little poem. I do it with pounding fists. One potato, two potato, three potato, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. Eight potato, nine potato, here comes number 10. <gasps> hot potato, hot potato, do it all again. And the kids really enjoy that. So you can listen to it or you can just teach it as I just did now and the kids will do it with you. Here's a class doing it with me. I teach the song Farmer Brown Had Five Red Apples and I found it was really engaging for the kids if I gave them five apple manipulatives. So I copied these, I cut them out, put them into a Ziploc bag, gave each child one and they had a set of five apples that was in front of them. As they sang the song and he ate one apple, they put an apple behind their back. And that was fun. The song goes maybe a little quickly for some. So use the gear tool to slow it down a little if you feel it's too quick for your pre-Ks. We continue doing letters each week with pre-K. This is the letter M. And for letter the M, the character is Morgan the monkey. And it's a fun little song that the kids like. Here's children demonstrating the movements. And here's the monkey song that we did in weeks one and two. It's a great time to review monkey climbing in the tree. And here's the movements if you haven't done it before, if you don't remember how to do it. Shake it together, another good movement song. Pre-Ks need lots of sit, stand instruments. So maybe this time when you do the monkey song, maybe you play instruments with it instead of just doing the movements. It would be a great place to add instruments. Or even in the shake it together, give them egg shakers and have them shake along to the song instead of just singing it and moving to it. Here's a kid's demo of it. And we end with skinnamarinky dinky dink, skinnamarinky do. And the kids again here demonstrate the movements. That's pre-K lesson three, September week three. Here is the kindergarten lesson for week three of September, kindergarten lesson three. We're going to again do some review and some new. Welcome to school, everyone. It's a kindergarten welcome song and kindergartens also love Bobo. And Bobo can be different seasonal things. I tried making a Halloween Bobo. Mine wasn't very good, so I'm gonna have to try again. But Bobo can be done with the video or you can make your own Bobo. And then Bobo sings and he tells you what the class is doing well. He becomes a friend to the kids. This is Vivachi by Handel and it's just Find different ways to keep a beat. Encourage your students to find lots of ways. You might want to do it twice. Once keeping a beat on the body, a second time doing it with instruments. This is my speaking voice. This is my speaking voice. Reviews all the different voice types. The kids may have done it last week. And if so, it's a review. Here is the interactive. And if you did the one, two, three, for meet me at the kitchen door poem last week. Maybe this week you'll try a new one. Jelly in the bowl, jelly in the bowl. 
Whipple wobble, whipple wobble, jelly in the bowl, make up movements to go with it, teach the kids the song, and then they choose voices to do the poem with. I would call it a song if I'd made up a melody for it. They learned last week, a smile goes a long, long way. And it's a good one to review because it's a longer song for the children. They'll need more than one week to learn it. Here's a performance by Colegio Menor, doing a smile goes a long, long way. This is new, loud voice, loud voice. Another little echo poem to teach concepts. Walk. Walk, walk to school, walk to school together is to practice making different kinds of movements and create movements for the poem. So here I've demonstrated some movements. You can skip over me and do it yourself and have the kids create their own movements. Andy Pandy is a cute little movement song. Andy Pandy, fine and dandy, all pop down. So it reinforces down, up, in, out, which are basic concepts for K. And we have the movements demonstrated here, but we've made it into a story because Andy Pandy itself isn't the most engaging movement song ever. Within the context of a story about toys that want to play, this becomes engaging. So listen to the story and sing Andy Pandy whenever it occurs in the story. We have also used Andy Pandy to prepare So and Me. So the first slide is simply the song and review it, sing it with the kids. There's a play button, you can play it if you don't feel comfortable singing it. I love this guy. This guy shows how the notes go higher and lower. Very cute. And here you can show Andy Pandy, fine and dandy, all pop down. You can point to the notes as you go and then all pop up, all pop in, all pop out. It's a good demonstration of when notes are the same, when notes are different. And then in this one, they figure out what the melody is. Andy Pandy would be this one. Fine and dandy, all pop down. And that's preparing the children to read notes in Soulfish. Great preparatory activity. And we end with skin and rink with our kindergartens as well as our pre-Ks. That's the kindergarten lesson three, September week three. Here is the grade one lesson for week three of September. Grade one, lesson three. And in this one, you can see we have Bobo again. The kids love Bobo. So the grade ones sing, welcome to music as their welcome song. And then they do Bobo. And again, you can do this with your own Bobo. It's just a tennis ball with the mouth cut up and some decorations on them. I've got a couple of different ones. In. They're all cute. And here is move to the beat. Again, you can do it with Miss Denise or you can do it just putting on a piece of music and moving yourself any way that you want and keeping a steady beat. Beat practice is essential for kids right through all the grades. And sing and move to the Grand Old Duke of York. This is review, but the song is to teach about fast and slow. Here's the fast, slow game where kids um, listen to a piece of music, decide if it's fast or slow. And this is the one where if you get them all right, he dunks in the dunk tank. That's fun. Find things to use, it says in your house, but it will say in your classroom to use as instruments. And then play along with, I like to eat, eat, eat. Two ways you could play along. You could play the beat all the way through, maybe choose one instrument for the chorus, different instrument for the verse, or you could play just on the words, eat, eat, eat. If I had sticks, I would play them on the eat, eat, eat but you decide how you want to play instruments with the song and then go back and sing it with the kids. Here's the counting song, very simple. One, two, tie my shoe, three, four, shut the door, five, six, pick up sticks, seven, eight, lay them straight, nine, 10, a big fat hen. So it's a very familiar counting song. And the reason we have this in first grade is to have the kids um, learn how to name so me, so, so me, or 
So it's preparation for labeling those notes if you haven't done it already. So listen to the counting song. Here's a class doing the movements with it. Here's the note highlights video that shows how the notes go higher and lower, and then it will sing it in Soulfish. If you've already taught your kids so and me, this is a great one. Have them sing it along in Solfa and see if they can do it. This is a pointing page, and I like this one. It's like Andy Pandy, where it visually shows how the notes go higher and lower. They'd point and sing. One, two, tie my shoe. So visually showing how it goes. The song Going to Kentucky is a fun little um, singing game is what it is. And I like I like to often end my classes in first grade with a game. Going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair to see a senorita with roses in her hair. Oh, shake it, baby, shake it. And the one in the middle, you choose one child to go in the center and they shake whatever they want to shake. If they want to shake shoulders or they want to shake their head and the class copies them. And I try and give everybody turns to go in the middle. Here's a kid's demo. We march around the outside of the person who's in the middle and we sing the song and then we shake. And then the music time is over. If you have a very short music class, 30 minutes, you won't be able to do all this. So pick and choose what you want. If you have 60 minutes, extend because there's lots of interactives. Andy Pandy has really good interactives. And there's many, many extensions that you can do. Pick instruments, play along with the song. So this makes a great lesson for about a 40 minute class period or a 50 minute class period or two thirties. But if you're shorter or longer, extend or leave something out. This is grade two, lesson three for September week three. So we start again with Welcome to Music. That's our welcome song for much of the year in grade two. I believe this is a review, Poor Little Bug on the Wall. They may have done it last week. One thing that my students enjoyed doing, I had a set of fly swatters from Ikea and we sang, Poor Little Bug on the Wall, swat, swat. And we used the fly swatters to fill in the beat. That was fun for the kids. No fly swatters, use a rhythm stick and pretend it's a swatter. Poor Little Bug on the Wall, tap, tap. And they like singing it. It's a good review of fast, slow, loud, quiet, because you sing it all those different ways. Um, I Can Sing a High Note is a new one. And it's, again, to really review what's high, what's low. I would have the kids show with arm motions how, how the notes go higher and lower. So listen, play it again, sing along. And here's a class demonstrating the movements. But I'm quite sure your class can figure out how to do it without a demo. The high-low game is another game in the game section of Music Play Online. And if you get most of the answers right, the little fellow with the balloons flies away. So it's cute. Personages with long ears. This is a listening map. We actually have a wonderful animator working on an animated version of this. It's not quite done yet, but it's easy to follow regardless. Listen to the donkey sing in song. Watch the movie to follow the high and low sounds in the music. So I have the kids move up with their scarves and then down, down, up, down, down. And you could find a scarf and copy what I do there. Um, again, if you're an experienced music teacher, you're familiar with the song, skip my video, show the kids yourself how to do it. This is mirror movements and mirror movements is when I make up a movement and you pretend you are my reflection in the mirror. Kids are very engaged by this and really encourage them to be silent while they're listening to the music. So Grave is a very slow piece of music and it is actually a really good one. I would suggest doing it with me the first time and then playing it again, shutting down your screen and having kids Go with partners and do the movements. One be the leader, one be the follower, and then switch roles. The one who was follower becomes the leader. Bounce High, Bounce Low is a reading song. And I've started adding the notation for the reading songs. Many of our music specialists would very happily teach this by rote with just the notation. And if your kids are good readers, 
and I'm not, I, I think my grade twos would be able to read ta, 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 ti, 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 ta. And they probably would be able to sing so, la, so, me, so, so, la, la, so, so, me. They probably would be pretty good at that. So if your kids can read it, teach the song as a reading song. Don't necessarily sing rote, I sing, you sing. You can read songs when they're um, within your ability levels. And then if you're not confident singing for your, your students yourself, use the note highlight videos. It'll show how the notes go higher and lower, and then it will do the song in solfege. If your kids are good at solfege, it'll be good practice for them singing in solfege with the video. Here's how you play. I start in the middle and I bounce to each child until I know who can bounce well and who can't. And then I partner the kids up and they bounce to each other. Some years I've had the kids have their own ball. If I use tennis balls with grade twos, they tend to go flying around the room, but I would have them cross their legs on the floor, make kind of a diamond shape out of their legs, and then bounce the ball within their legs, and they could do that. Playground balls or kick balls, grade twos can handle and then do the bouncing by themselves. Bouncing, great way to feel. Strong beat, weak beat, strong beat, weak beat. Here is an activity for grade twos. How many sounds is it? Bounce, one sound or two. One, high, bounce low, bounce the, that's two sounds, ball two, two sounds, maxi, two sounds, po, one sound. And you can go on and do other activities with this as well. Long class, do extensions. Short class, do the minimum. And then the music time is over. There is also an ORF arrangement for bounce high, bounce low. So if you are an experienced ORF teacher, you have a beautiful set of xylophones and the telephones in your room, consider teaching the ORF arrangement as well for this. That's lesson three, grade two for September week three. This is grade three, lesson three, September week three. So third grade have done since the beginning of the year the song I Like Singing. Um, they should know it quite well by now and be able to sing for sure all the echo parts and probably much of the verses as well. If you've made kazoos, hand them out and have the kids sing along. Here is Poison Melody using me, so, and la. And it's to prepare them for Plainsies Clapsies that uses those same pitches. So have them do the so me la and then have them do plainsies clapsies. Again, I'm now including notation slides in the lessons so that a teacher who wants to simply have the kids read the song can have the kids read the song. If you want to use this song and teach it yourself by rote, you can. You can also use the note highlights video to teach the song, whether, um, you do solfa or not, there will be solfa at the end of this video, and that's great practice for kids who haven't had lots of experience reading solfa. Here's how the kids do it. This is a third grade class that I was, uh, I did kind of a residency and I had them for 10 days and they were so fun to work with. And some of them show it off as a solo activity and they were so proud of themselves when they could toss that bean bag and um, do the whole song without dropping it. Here's a challenge. Can you name the solfa notes in Plainsies Clapsies? And then we have Poison Rhythm with whole and half notes. And that's because the next song, Rocky Mountain, is going to have whole and half notes. So here, it doesn't have whole notes, but it does have half notes. T, 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 So this is a new rhythm to read for third grade. They should have done it in grade two, but if they didn't, introduce it now. And this is a half note. I call it two because it's two beats in four, four time. Others might call it ta or have different rhythm names for it, but using whatever rhythm names you use is fine. Here's the solfa notes. And if your third grade is good at reading, they might be able to read do, 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 me and read it in solfa. If that's not within their ability levels yet, use the video and it'll introduce the solfa to them. You can often play a measure, pause it, and then have the kids sing back. So if do, 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 me, do, 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 me is new for the kids, play it, 
and then have them sing it back and show the hand signs. If you don't know solfa as a teacher, it's a way for you to learn how to sing with the hand signs and solfish. Here's the full song with the lyrics. I would have them listen to part of it, sing it back, and then when they're confident, sing the whole song. I, I really love this song. And this is the same class that did Plainsies Clapsies. They created the movement that you see in this video. So you feel free, create your own movement with the song. This is what this class came up with, with their ideas, make your own. Here's a rhythm play along for entry of the gladiators. Last year we had just the cup game. My feeling is early in grade three, this cup game is probably too hard. This is much more doable. If you have three different instruments, give them to the kids. The video will show when the sticks play, when the drums play, when the triangles play. If you don't have all three of those instruments for your class, substitute and use whatever instruments you can. But the play along is going to be much simpler than the cup game. But if you've got a grade three class you want to challenge, try the cup game. What I do suggest is that you only learn the first cup pattern and on the B sections, instead of learning another pattern, do copycat. You lead a beat pattern and the kids copy you. That's a lot simpler than doing the cup game all the way through and doing a whole bunch of different parts for third grade. So that is a fun lesson three, September week three, grade three. Now I am going to grade four. Lesson three for grade four in September of week three is going to start with some body percussion and I want the kids to be able to learn those note values audio, uh, using their, their ears, so orally as well as reading. And then if they have some reading skills, they can read the Good Morning Song. Again, I added the notation slide in the updates. So ta, t, t, ta, t, t. It only uses so, me, and do. S for so, M for me, D for do. So if they can read solfa, so, me, do, so, me, do. And they could read the song. If they can't read it yet, then use the note highlights. It'll show them how the notes go higher and lower, and it will show them the soulfish. And again, feel free, play a measure, pause, kids sing back. My voice um, doesn't work, so I'm an octave lower than I should be. So I would use the note highlights to get the kids singing in proper range. Here is the full song. It's a good warm up song. In this, um, in this version of the song, it goes up by half steps. Each repetition goes up a little bit, so it's a good vocal warm up. And then there is a game. This is a little bit of a complicated version of the game. You could make up your own move, movements. But what's what makes it a little complicated is that the inside ones, when we sing um, always time to play, the person on the inside is going to move one to the left. And so there's new partners each time. Here's practice reading at different tempos. I love the tempo interactive activity. Wherever your students are at, if this is their reading level ability, choose one of these. If this is their ability, choose something harder. Stretch them. Here's naming the notes in Chester. Chester was introduced last week. Chester, have you heard about Harry? Just got back from the army. I hear he knows how to wear a rose hip hip. Hooray for the army. I taught grade fours and fives Chester this last week and they really enjoyed it. They enjoyed the movements. They enjoyed the challenge as it went faster. So here you have it and it's going to start moderato and then go quicker and quicker and quicker. Here's a class doing the movements if you need that refresher. We've got a new game on the website. Rhythm Racer used to be our worst game and now it is our best game for rhythm. They hear three patterns. I can choose my road. I can choose my car. And then I hear three pattern, one of three patterns. And that was this pattern. And when I get it right, the pit crew goes to work on the car and they assemble it. After I've done 10 questions correctly, there's a race. And if you've got enough questions right, your car will win the race. It's fun. 
um, reviewing of note values. And this is a fun activity. September is nice weather in most places. So have the kids go outside with sidewalk chalk and draw note values so that they get practice drawing them. That's always a fun activity. Any of the chase games that we do are more fun done outside than inside. And if COVID happens to be running through your school, it's a little safer to be singing outside than it is inside. So that's our grade four lesson for the third week of September, lesson three. Grade five, lesson three for September week three. It starts with a little warm up chant. This is a camp song. Boom, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, rock, a chicka, rock, a chicka, boom. And you do it in different voices. You do high, low, slow, fast. You can do it different ways. You can add an ostinato to it. Boom, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, boom. So I like this one as a warm up, especially if you have grade five kids who are reluctant to sing. Chanting is less threatening, it's still musical. They can still learn concepts, but it will engage them and not make them feel uncomfortable. The game Rhythm Racing used to be our worst game. Now it is a great game. It's just been rebuilt and you can choose your level from below. So depending on where your students are at, you can choose a level. This is the level one. I can choose my road. I choose my car and then I hear a rhythm and I select it. And that would be this rhythm. And the pit crew comes out and does something to my car. Every correct rhythm is going to make my car a little bit better. And when the race comes, if I have enough right, it's going to win the race. Fun game. Um, practice naming pitch letter names. The song Ickle Ockle is a really, really simple reading song. It's going to come right here. But if the kids haven't had a lot of practice reading notes, that's happening. Um, you can play the coconut chaos game and I'll check why that link doesn't work. But I've given you notation slide for Ickle Ockle. So the kids in grade five should be able to read T, 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 Ta, T, T, read the rhythms. They should be able to read and sing either soulfish or pitch letter names G, G, A, A, G, E, E, or if you're doing solfa, so, so, la, la, so, me, me. And if doing, uh, if you've done that and you want to practice, here's pitch letter names. They can name the notes. If you give the kids an activity like this, you can give it um, to them as a link in a Google slide. And what they will see is this. They'll see grade five, lesson three. They'll log in as a student and then they can access some fun. This goes to the lesson and then they can scroll down to find the note naming game. If I give them a link directly from this on the website, it'll go directly to that game. So name the notes. If you've done that, you could watch the note highlights video or skip it as, as the case may be. It's good for the kids to learn to sing in solfa if that's something new for them and this video will, will go through that with them. These are the game directions. It's a chase game. If it's possible to go outside, it's the most fun. And I've given the directions for the game here. Here you can see a demonstration of how it is played. I should maybe move those directions to this slide. I've given the ORF arrangement for this, and I'm going to start doing this in the lesson modules so that if you have ORF instruments, Here's what you do. You teach the bass xylophone, bass metallophone part. I always teach it by padding. So I would do two, two, and I would actually do the two stretching on my leg. Two, two, ta, ta, two. If you don't have ORF instruments, you can still teach these ostinato parts and have the kids sing with them. So if I'm doing two, two, ta, ta, two, Nickel, ockle, blue bottle, fishes in the sea. If you have a handsome fish, just choose me. And that's adding one ostinato. You could have a second group of kids do the triangle part on triangles 
or on snaps if they wish. Soprano xylophone um, or metallophone can uh, choose any two notes and play on those rests. So that's the ORF arrangement. New song introduced in week three, When I Believe in Me. And I really like this song. It's a good choral piece. And you can discuss the lyrics with the kids, read them together. What do you think it's about? And there's many, many inspiring examples of people who faced great adversity. And because they believe in themselves, they can do anything. There's a really good example in the JJ and Me, JJ and Friends, Tony Memel was born with the flipper. He was born with an, without an arm. And he's now a professional guitarist, even with only one arm. There's another example in the JJ and Me. If you go to the Discover JJ and Friends, another example was um, a girl who was on America's Got Talent and got to the finals in America's Got Talent. And she's deaf. How you can sing that well when you're deaf is just amazing. So When I Believe in Me is a song that hopefully inspires your students to believe in themselves and do their very best. This performance was sent to me from an Australian friend and her students did a beautiful job of the song. And so here they can sing with the entire song. I would suggest teaching part one, then part two is kind of an echo part. Will be easy to learn if your kids are used to singing in two parts. If not, just do it in unison. And we have a little video about the string family and then they do Allegro from Autumn by Vivaldi with this beautiful animated play along. I've suggested you use two instruments, um, one on the forte parts, one on the piano parts. It might be sticks and drums, it could be other instruments. But this is an animated play along, so it's quite easy for the kids to do. Ready, go. and then the other instrument for the piano parts. And finally, we end with a composer video that tells a little bit about the life of Antonio Vivaldi. It's very short, it's under two minutes long. So in under two minutes, your kids can learn a little bit about a classical composer. That's grade five, lesson three. Now I am going to middle school, which could be grade six, seven, or eight. For September week three, it's lesson three. And I have, I don't know why it starts at the bottom. I have started with poison rhythm. This is one of the kids' favorite activities. And we're doing more complex rhythms because these are older students. T, ticka, ticka, T. If your students haven't done it before, it's simply an echo exercise. It will help them to learn it. Play the game Rhythm Racer, and this will link to the Rhythm Racer game. And it's the same game we played with grade five, but you can choose more difficult levels. There's lots of levels to play with this. Then we have the song Mango Walk, and it could be a reading song, it may not. It's a good opportunity to teach about first and second endings. And if again, music specialist, you simply wanna teach this by rote yourself, or you wanna try and have the kids read at least the rhythms, ti ta ti ta ta ti ta ti ta ta They're great, great rhythm reading. Um, I think it's a good level for middle school to be reading. And then we have uh, listen to the song, what's it about? It's actually a song from Jamaica. And number 11 is the, a variety of mangoes in in Jamaica. When, when they grade the mangoes, number 11 is going to be a good one. Here's practicing the note names, interactive activity. <clears throat> and again, you can, if you want, give it, the kids a direct link to it. If you're gonna do a direct link, go to the song, pops open in a new window, and then here is the note name challenge. And if I give the kids a direct link to this, they will go directly to that activity. So I'm gonna choose an incognito window because this is what the kids will see when they go. Doesn't remember my passwords. Mango walk, I access as a student. My code is already embedded. If you haven't already done so, go to your dashboard, generate your student code. And it embeds in all the links you give your kids. And then it automatically goes to the note name challenge activity. If you're looking for the dashboard, I can't find it right now. I'll find it in a second. So that is 
Okay, so the dashboard now is right over here. So here is the dashboard. Go to student code and it'll the first time you go there, it'll say generate my code. It will be unique to you and it will stay yours as long as you are a subscriber. So we've done the notes, we've read the rhythms. Here is a rhythm sort activity for Mango Walk. Here is um, a video about first and second endings. And here I play ta or ti 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 ta ta an ostinato with the song. Demonstrate using me or just demonstrate yourself how you can play an ostinato with the song. And then have your students create ostinatos that they can play with the song. The ORF arrangement really is, a, it's one, two, three, four ostinato parts with the song. So if you go to the ORF arrangement, if you have ORF or instruments, teach the arrangement as is. I start with the bass, then I add the alto, then the soprano, then the color parts. If you don't have instruments, teach these as ostinato patterns. Pat, 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 pat. The bongo part, you could play on any non-pitched instrument. Alto xylophone part, again, I would teach that as an ostinato. Alto I might play with claps. Two, two, ta, ta. Two. My brother Dida, tell me that you go mango walk, you go mango walk. Mm, mm, mm. And can they do that ostinato pattern while they sing? If they can, they're ready to go to instruments. But if you don't have instruments, you can still do ostinatos. Glockenspiels, I would snap fingers. So you can do glockenspiel snap, xylophones clap, bass xylophones pat and teach them the ORF arrangement or simply use this as ostinatos. So that's middle school, lesson three, September week three.